All of you, welcome back once again. In this video, I'll show you that how you can structure your smart contract in proper way when you are building for your client or working in the company. So this is the architecture we follow generally. I follow when I build any project, any smart contract for my client. So that's what I follow. And I would encourage you to take this approach. If you find better approach, you can definitely switch to that. But this is the architecture which helped me a lot when I write the contract. And in that way, I have the proper idea that what exactly I'm developing and what are the things I have to add. And then I move to the functionality. So this is the one of the project which I'm currently working on. And for my client, I'm developing a smart contract for a marketplace. It has a lot of features like it has trading, staking. It has a marketplace of ICO and it also has the feature of NFTs and generating and buying and selling. So it has tons of feature. But first, I'm focusing on one particular business logic which is the marketplace. After once I done with that, I will move to the next step. So I want to show you the structure which I'm generally following and applying in this huge project. So you can take the idea and you can go ahead in your next project with the same approach. So you can see this is the entire contract I have. I'm done with the front end, but this is the smart contract which I have written. It's just the layout for the smart contract which I have designed for the marketplace. So I have taken this license identifier. I'm using this particular solidity version like 8.1 because most of the libraries which will be very compatible and it's the recommended one. Uh, in the previous version, we have a couple of bugs which got resolved in this particular one. So this is the one I'm using and I'm taking this interface. And the reason why I have taken this interface because there are certain calculations which I have to do. Like if I want to transfer the token to one user to another user, so I have to do the transaction. For that, I need the transfer function. I need to know the balance of the token of the user. I have to know the address. I have to know the balance. So those all the information I want to perform the transaction in terms of staking or in terms of providing the reward. So that's why I have taken this interface. I can easily manage this data from the front end. I can easily able to get the data from the blockchain in my front end side and that data I can pass into my smart contract. But for being on the safer side, like to be everything controlled by the smart contract, you should take this approach. So all I have to do is to simply pass the address of the token and it's going to make the entire calculation, entire data within the contract. So that's why I have taken this interface. In that I'm going to have four to five function. I'm just showing the layout which I have taken in this particular contract. So that's my interface. Then I have the struct because in that I'm going to keep certain information about the token, about the user who's going to invest for staking and getting reward. So all those information I'm going to keep track in this token details. Right now, I'm focusing on the token marketplace, but it's going to have more details. We're going to have more struck when it's come to NFT or staking as well. So that's what I have here. And here I have taken a couple of events and events are really very important. I have noticed some of you don't include event in your smart contract, but you don't need to do that. You have to include this event because when you're going to do the indexing of the data on the blockchain, this helps you a lot. So it will help you a lot when you're going to interact with the blockchain, getting the data about a specific transaction. So you can able to get it based on the indexing and the event. So it's a very important concept. So that's what I have taken. So altogether I have multiple, like I have token receives, token transfer, token withdraw and token add. So these are the events I have taken. Now come back to the modifier. What I have noticed when I review any smart contract for auditing, I have noticed that some of the user, they try to build a contract and do that check. Sometimes we have to build the required statement. We have to check certain conditions. You try to do in every single function individually. So this is not how you have to develop your smart contract. You have to extract that repetitive code in terms of modifier and that's what you're going to attach in the function so that's why i have taken this modifier and if you're not using modifier you have to start using it because this will help you a lot and it will saves to save you from writing the same repetitive code so if i want to verify the transaction and control with the owner so i can do that i can build a modifier where i can check the address whether the address is interacting it's a owner or not i can do the same thing for the creator i can do the same thing for the withdrawal concept so that's why modifier is very important so i have taken this receive function because it's going to receive funds from the user that's why i have taken that and i have the constructor and that i'm going to initialize couple of data i'm going to initialize the price of the token owner nfts reward system so those are the initialization i will do in the construction so these are the function i have included in the smart contract but it's going to have more when we go to deal with the nft so the very first function we have for create pre-sale because user can come and they can create their pre-sale in the platform so we can charge money so all the logic for charging money and how long they are keeping running this pre-sales in our contract we have to keep all that track so that's why i have taken this function and in that we're going to charge the commission as well 
So this is the one function we have. We have this multiplier because when the user will buy or when the user will withdraw the token or transfer the token or claim the reward, we have to calculate. The so for that, we have multiple library which you can use in our smart contract. But I just want this multiplier function because I want to compare the price and I have to do the multiplication. So that's why I have taken this only function. But if you want to use like subtraction, divisions or plus minus, you can simply utilize that as well in the contract. So that's the math library we have. And here I have the function called buy token. So user can purchase the token. We're going to run in our own ICO and O token airdrop. So we're going to use the same function because this function is going to be a kind of a reusable function. So we're going to build a lot of logic in that. That's why it has a payable. And here we are doing the check whether the token is supported or not. So right now we are focusing on the token, but it's going to also check for the NFT and the user already claimed the airdrop or not. So that's all the check we're going to do in this particular token supported supported token then the next function we have is get balance and this particular function will return the balance of the token but i'm going to make it as a reusable model because this contract is going to be huge we have multiple features so i'm going to modify this contract based on the nft as well so when the user will pass the nft like id or they can pass the address so it's going to fetch out the information about the particular nft or particular address so right now i've given this hardcoded token but we're going to add more variables in that i'm just showing you the architecture then we have this supported token so when we're going to execute any transaction in the contract we have to check whether the token is supported or not because this is a ico marketplace other user can come and they can create their token and we're going to make money out of it so we have to do the check before we execute the transaction when you are building a smart contract especially to the marketplace there you need to add this particular feature withdrawal because creator can create the token they can stick in the smart contract but if they wants to withdraw it so they can do it so we're going to build a couple of logic in that if they try to withdraw it before the time we're going to charge commission because ultimately we have to make money as a creator of the custom contract and as a marketplace holder so that's why we have this withdrawal function then we have this token detail all we have to do is to simply pass the address of the token and it's going to return the entire details like symbol address decimal endpoints which we need for performing the transaction we're going to have the address and the name so all of these details we can easily able to get it with the help of this particular function then we have this created token buy so we're going to simply pass the address of that user who is trying to interact with our smart contract and we're going to pull out the entire details about the about the user that how many token he has at stake like how many tokens he has created how many nft he has lifted and how many icos and airdrop is running so that's all information we're going to pull out with this particular function so all we have to do is to simply pass the address of the creator so that's the logic we have to build here then we have this particular function it's a very generic one to return all the data we have in our smart contract so that's why i've taken this get all token so that's the approach you have to take when you will write your next smart contract try to lay out the entire architecture of your contract that what are the features you're going to provide what are the services you're going to provide and then you have to pitch to your client and then you can show that these are the things i have and after that you have to start building the logic because this logic can be changed like here we are verifying only for the token but it has to be designed in such a way so it can handle took it can handle nft as well as the token and other thing as well so you have to know so this this architecture will help you a lot you should never ever write the smart contract straight away try to build the architecture and look at the code that what exactly is there what are the feature is going to be added and after that you have to develop so this approach will help you a lot to have a proper idea that what exactly you are developing and in that way you can able to build a secure smart contract because you know that what exactly is going to be there so that's the approach i personally take and i would suggest you to take it but if you have your own way of developing your smart contract then definitely you can try with that just give this try and see yourself that how everything is coming together whether you are getting yourself on the track when you are developing a smart contract and in fact i have used a similar structure in one of the recent projects which i have published on the channel so you can see like i hope you guys are familiar with the blockchain coder there you will find all the resources like you can come back to the source code section there you will find all the resources we have built tons of projects so simply download the startup file and start following the tutorial so come back here you can come back to the channel and this is the project which i'm talking about it's a four hour long so make sure to follow this one in that we have followed the similar structure and we have designed the similar kind of business logic in the dap so this will help you to a lot to understand that how you can design a proper and secure and a scalable smart contract for any type of marketplace okay so i hope you guys have understood that how you can simply 
develop any smart contracts. So before you jump straight away writing the code, try to build the layout. That is very important. Once you build the layout, you can easily be able to track down in the entire documentation when you're going to give back to your client that this is what you have done. This is the way, this is the approach you have taken. Like first you have designed the layout, then you have done the research. After that you have understood the business logic and then you have built a smart contract. So there is a proper structure which you have to follow if you really want to build a scalable smart contract and a secure smart contract. This is the personal approach which I follow when I write any smart contract for my clients and when I work in the industry. So this is what I have taken and you can also take the same approach and if you like it, then give a thumbs up or if you have your own way of developing a smart contract, then there is no problem. Like everybody has their own way of developing something and learning. Okay. So make sure to build project, build project. The more project you will build, the better idea you will have that what are you exactly learning? Because if you don't build project, all of this video is not going to help you at all. You will watch 10 minutes video, five minutes video It's not going to help you at all unless or until you not start building project. So the more project you will build, the better idea you will have that what exactly you are building, what is your learning path? So whether you are learning in the right direction or not, whether you're getting distracted, so that will help you a lot. So start building project, start building project. So with that, I'm ending this video. Hope you guys have liked it. If you still have any confusion, any doubt, do let me know in the comment section. Definitely I'll try to help you on that and have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.